Welcome back to another video. Today, as you can tell, we're gonna be drawing an orchid and I wanted to share the process and the things that I learned during my 30 days flora challenge. And I don't want to overcomplicate this intro, so let's just get started. So now that we got that out of the way, let's start sketching. Uh, I'm not a person who's usually very into measurements. I think that it, they take a lot of time, but if one thing that I've learned is that a good drawing is 90% discipline and 10% skill. I didn't do any like crazy measurements, I just kind of like copied the same measurements from the picture that I took. I will leave the picture uh, linked in case you want to use the same one. I mean, where the flower starts and where it ends and things like that just to give myself an idea that I'm having proper proportions and things like that. And but yeah, like don't overthink it too much. Now when it comes to the actual proper sketch, I think that the best thing that you can do is to kind of follow your intuition. like. You have the lines, you have what it got. And I think that in this case, especially orchids are very structural. So something that really calms me down when I'm feeling intimidating at copying anything uh, is to simply think that no matter how complex something is, at the end of the day, it's just geometrical shapes. So you just have to kind of like get better at identifying those circles and those triangles into all of the objects that you see. And in case that you're having problems identifying those shapes and those lines in the object itself, you can look at the background. And so you can see kind of like the negative space between the object and the background, and you can copy that silhouette. Uh, and that gives you a pretty good view of whether what you're doing actually matches the reference or not thing that I think is really important is to not race too much. I think it's better to just have a lot of lines unless it's like a really huge mistake that you have to delete completely but it's just like maybe you're off a, just a little bit maybe you are not entirely sure about the line you want to redo it those kind of things just just do it on the paper instead of erasing and then you can choose the one that, that you want because uh, first of all you're gonna you're gonna start overworking the paper and that's gonna look bad with the watercolor uh, but second of all, and most importantly, I think that when you are deleting a mistake, you're also deleting the lesson that you learned with that mistake. And you might end up repeating your mistake over and over again because you don't have a guideline to what is it that you did wrong and how to do it right. Now, moving on to the second stage, that is the outlining. So for this, you're gonna need a uh, fine liner, obviously. I have this uh, Micron fine liner waterproof because obviously we're gonna use watercolors. And the reason why I changed my picture to be black and white here, it's kind of like a way of cheating into getting a better view of the shadows and the contrast of the, of the flowers so that I can get um, a good idea about how I should outline this because if you outline the whole thing with a stable solid line it's just gonna give it a very two-dimensional look so it's just it's not gonna have that much of a dimension and of the elegance of the real flower the because flowers are obviously very delicate and if you just do it solid it's just gonna look very flat so put it in in black and white just brings everything down into the light and you just have to follow the light and work accordingly. Now going into the fun part, which is the colors. Uh, let's talk about watercolor palettes. I don't think uh, you need a very expensive one. In fact, if you have never used watercolors before, I would recommend you get a cheap one, not only because, you, because the feeling of wasting expensive supplies can intimidate you and make you not even want to paint, but also because uh, expensive watercolors are very pigmented makes it hotter to control uh, the pigments and where everything's going like the first time that I did it it looked like I was using acrylics because of how thick it was it was not a good idea now I'm good on it but still I 
Sometimes when it's something that's more chill like this, I just prefer to use my cheap watercolors. Then what I'm doing here is just establishing like a simple um, color palette as a guide. Uh, and the reason why I'm doing this is because the best thing you can do for watercolors is, is to work with layers. So that's why I have like three colors, like three shades of that same similar pink. Uh, so that I could have like a reference about which color I'm going to use for each layer. And I didn't exactly stick to it. This is more to like make sure that the colors look good together. Um, I think this is especially important if you're going to do a flower that has a green leaves or something like that. I think green is a beautiful color, but it can be very problematic if you choose the wrong one. In this case, all of the colors are very close together, so it kind of flows very easily and I didn't like struggle getting colors. I kind of just went with the first colors that I found. Uh, and you can see that I also edited the image because I wanted it to be a little bit more warm and muted than the original one. So here I'm just starting to lay those layers slowly. I would say that you need at least three layers to really give the flower that dimension that it needs. And, and try not to use a lot of water. I think that using a lot of water is a very common mistake and it can really end up ruining your paper, especially if you have one that's not super thick like the one that I have. Um, it certainly happens to me. So you can really try to just um, kind of follow the same guidelines of the black and white picture and just start from lightest to darkest. I think that's the best thing that you can do. But with watercolors, I feel like that's the only way to do it. You need to start with the lighter, lighter colors and move into the darker ones because you can always add, but you can never take back. And I also feel like an important tip is to exactly do that. Not overwork the paper, but also not overwork the drawing. I think watercolors are so great because they're so kind of casual way of coloring things. I'm obviously not going for a realistic look, I'm kind of going for like a what, like illustration, cartoonish look. And, and for me that just means that I have to be a lot more about the impression than about the accuracy. And so for example, you can see here that I didn't go um, dot by dot to make the patterns and the lines of the of the orchid and instead I just kind of like splatter the paint with the brush. Um, if you're gonna do this, be very careful that you're not using a very big brush because it's gonna make this, the amount of paint a lot bigger and harder to control. And, and then it's just about like working on the details. I feel like the finishing touches are always what bring a piece together, just paying attention to, to the details, but again, without getting lost in them. Uh, I do think that without the line, it could have looked very pretty and I'm actually looking forward to trying that because it's obviously a different style. Um, and But I've been really relying very heavily on the ink and I want to kind of like step away and get more into just plain watercolor. And I think, yeah, that's all I have to say. Remember to not keep on fiddling with the drawing after you feel like you've reached the point in which you should abandon it and something that really helps me is to remember this quote that says that art is never finished but abandoned you just have to pick a point in which you say no more because otherwise you might end up going on forever and ever but also during that time you might actually ruin something that you liked before so I think it's good to stop yourself and not overthink it too much and that's about it i hope you really liked the video and that it was helpful in some set of way and i'll just see you in the next one